we're going to begin this project by importing the image of the plan that we're looking to recreate. Here it's a simple bike rack plan that we located. It had a very grainy image and no uh, exploded view of the plans. So you see there it's a very simple image. And we're going to recreate it by doing uh, sort of a top-down view, creating some boxes, lifting those up or uh, expanding those from that two-dimensional view and then sizing everything correctly. We know our plan has a 54 inch 2 by 4 so as we lay out the rectangle we can type in 1.5 which is the true dimension of a 2 inch piece of lumber so 1.5 comma 54 and this gets our length so then we're going to select that, copy it, and paste it. That gives us our next side. And again, this is our 2x4 piece that runs along the front and the back of the rack. We also know that it's 24 inches apart, so we set a guide at 24 inches, grab our Move tool, and then simply grab the opposite edge. We're going to set it approximately and then grab the corner, line up the corner, and that allows SketchUp to snap it to the same spot. Down at the end, we're going to type our 24 by 1.5 for our uh, dividing pieces. And again, just lay out the rectangle. Once it's laid out, you can just start typing 24 for the one dimension, comma 1.5 for the other dimension. So we have our end pieces here. We're going to space uh, each two by four, each of, excuse me, each of the two by sixes that are on the inside, uh, two inches apart to account for a wheel. That's about an average mountain bike wheel, but you should really do it based upon your needs. If you have something thin um, or something extra thick, you should do it according to that. So you see we're laying some guides at two inches, and we'll then grab the rectangle tool and drop in another 24, 1.5 and hit enter. Same thing, rectangle, 24, 1.5, and you'll see I, uh, because I started on the left-hand side, it's starting with the width, so it would be 1.5, comma 24. So now we need to do the center piece. We're going to find the center line, and then we know because our space in between the two, I keep saying two by fours, but two by sixes is uh, two inches. We know we need to go one inch from the center line. You can do this in different ways. As you see, I'm gra grabbing the measuring tape and trying to create a guide, but it won't create a guide uh, in line like that. So what I'll do is I'll grab my uh, pencil line drawing tool. And I'm just going to go from the center point and draw a one inch line. And the, the uh, you'll see it snapped to the midpoint for you, so I just draw my one inch line. There we go. And again, I just take the pencil line, draw from the center point, and uh, hit one and enter. Press the literally press the key one and enter, and that's going to create a one inch line for you. So then we grab our rectangle tool. So we created we also created a line uh, Yeah, we'll do our rectangle tool 24 by 1.5 and then we'll measure create a guide 2 inches over and then do another 24 comma 1.5 to create our our second piece. And again, those are 2 by 6s in the middle. You can see now we need to lift everything up. Um, the 2x6 protrudes from the bottom a little bit, and of course it comes up from the top and then has kind of a chopped dog ear um, at the top. doesn't need to have that, just gives it a little little nicer look, a little lighter, uh, lighter weight. So we'll go ahead and clip those corners once we lift the 2x6s up. So we're going to delete the space that doesn't need to be used. We just click on it with our cursor tool, our select tool and uh, press the delete button. So now we grab our push-pull tool and we're going to elevate the 2x4 end pieces 
uh, three and a half inches because a two by four is one and a half by three and a half. So then we'll grab what's going to be our two by sixes and elevate those the same as the the end pieces, which again is three and a half. So you just grab your push pull tool, lift it up, and then click on the face of the adjacent two by four, and it'll snap to that point. And you can see somehow when we laid it out probably with those little one inch guides in the middle we didn't fill in all the spaces so we're just going to grab our pencil tool fill in those empty spaces just to close off our piece and allow us to move things and uh, use our push pull, push pull tool properly Okay, now once we have those segmented, we can lift the 2x6s beyond the point where they need to be. And because they're already 3.5 and, and a 2x6 is 5.5 wide, we uh, know that we can go 1 inch up and 1 inch down. So we will just use the push-pull tool, lift up, and hit 1, enter. And that'll lift it up 1 inch, and then we just take the push-pull, lift the others, and click on the face of the other object that's at the same elevation and that'll snap it to that point. We do the same thing with the underside as well. Now I'm just showing you there's 24 inches in between there and we have a four and a half inch piece now we need to get it to five and a half so we're gonna drop that down one inch and do the same thing push pull pull it down hit the number one and enter it'll snap it to one and then we just use the other ones push pull click on the face and it snaps it to the correct correct elevation we missed one fill line here we'll do that okay so we have our piece with 2x4s and 2x6s. It's fine, it would work. The only thing we want to do is just clip the corners as you see it in the picture. And we're just going to do a little 1 inch clip on each. We'll do it by drawing a line and then using the push-pull tool to get rid of the, the piece that's there. So we start at the outer uppermost corner, draw a 1 inch line, and draw from there to the opposite side. Then we'll just click on our cursor, select, copy that piece, and then paste it just by hitting, hitting Control V and you'll see it's pretty easy when we paste it gives us the move tool. So it's pretty easy to paste right into the proper place and align the, the point. So we'll do this one side and uh, then we're going to spin around and recreate it See here, I'll try and paste, but obviously it's a different orientation. So I'll just do the same with the pencil. Draw a one inch line in, connect the corner, select that triangle, copy it, control C, and then control V to paste it in place. Here I'll just paste it anywhere, it's not snapping properly. And then I'll just uh, grab that lower corner drag it to the place it needs to be and then the rest of them should allow should start me at that corner when I do the control V to paste. So once we have all 12 of those in place we'll then go ahead and grab the push pull tool and just push the face to the opposite side and it'll essentially chop that, that corner for us. Little dog ear is what they would refer to it as. And let's spin around because remember our marks are on the opposite side here. Same thing, push pull, push it over to the opposite face, get rid of that material, and we're going to end up with a complete object. 
So really the only thing that we want to do, because it is a wood plan uh, that people will reference, we're just going to do the, drop some measurements in there. So we'll just uh, grab our measurement tool. Let's get rid of that image. So let's grab the measurement tool. And then we'll just click on a line drag it in, you'll see this is a 2x4, which is of course 3.5, 54 inches long. This is our 2x6, which again is 1.5 by 5.5, so there's our 24 inch length. And our top ends up being, again, we cut in our little dog ear 1 inch in each end, so it ends up at 22. You could measure that or you could just clip each one the same. You could really make that look any way you want, round it over. Sand it off. You can do anything you want with that. There's really not a need to lay all of this out because uh, we're using dimensional lumber, 2x4s and 2x6s, but a lot of people like to see that when they're doing a plan. So there you have it. There's our simple bike rack plan done in SketchUp with 2x4s and 2x6s. Good luck.